let's say if I want to put this into the general form, okay? And in general form, remember, let me just go back to my Word document. Uh, where are we? Right there. Um, the A, B, and C's have to be whole numbers. I didn't stipulate that here, which is really bad. But A, B, and C should be whole numbers, okay, not fractions. So I need to go back and massage this stuff so that I don't have fractions anymore. And I'm going to do that by multiplying by 3, okay. And so I get 3Y is equal to 2X minus 7. This is still not in general form because remember in general form I need everything on one side and uh, a zero on the other side. So I'm going to move this over here so that my equation becomes 2x minus 3y minus 7 is equal to 0. So this is the general form for an equation of a line that is parallel to this line and it goes to the point 2 comma negative 1. So you should really point, put the point 2 comma negative 1 in here and see that you do get a 0. Why don't we spend a minute doing that, okay? So if I do this and plug in there, so I get 4 plus 3 minus 7 is equal to 0. And yes, I didn't F up anywhere, okay? So that's why I put a smiley there, so things look good. All right, so that was for parallel lines, okay? And then the next question, if you take a look at the question, the next question is parallel and perpendicular. So let's do the second part. Now for the second part, I'm not going to do all four forms. I'll let you kind of work on that. I'll do one form for you and then you guys do the others, okay? So I'm going to do part B now. I want a perpendicular line. So remember the slope of my original line was equal to two over three. The slope of my perpendicular line uh, is going to be m1 is going to be the negative reciprocal of this, which is negative 3 over 3. Then again, using the point slope form, I get y minus minus 1 is equal to negative 3 over 2, x minus 2. And this is my point slope form. And then I'll leave it as an exercise for you. To, actually, this is really not quite clean. You should really write this as y plus 1 equals negative 3 over 2, x minus 2, point slope form. Okay? And then you need to massage this to put it into the other uh, three different forms. And I'll leave that as an exercise for you. Okay? All right. Uh, moving on to the next topic on P2. And that is the concept of rate of change. Okay? So there's a definition of rate of change that's given in your book on page 12, way down at the bottom, and you need to read that. Okay, um, um, read that, and what I'll do is I'll try and explain it to you uh, graphically as well. So there are two rates of changes. Okay, there's an average rate of change, and there's also an instantaneous. And this is where calculus comes in, instantaneous, instantaneous. Did I spell this right? It doesn't look right. Instant, oh, Charlotte, I need your help. Instantaneous, I think there should be no, okay, instantaneous. Yeah, that sounds better, okay? So, I-N-S-T-A-N-E-O-U-S. Uh, let's get this out of there, okay? So that's two different forms of rates of change, an average and an instantaneous. So here are the differences. Supposing if you were to plot a graph, okay, plot a graph of distance versus time. And let's say the graph looks something like this. In other words, as time goes on, the distance from some point is increasing and then kind of really stays put, okay? Stays put. In other words, nothing is moving. So first of all, the average rate of change. If you take two instances in time, like for example, take this instance in time, one, and then another one, two, and let's say if the distances are, let's say if this is three and this is five, then the average rate of change in the interval in the interval uh, 1 comma 2 is given by 
the change in the distance, so the change in the distance is 5 minus 3 over the change in the time, 2 minus 1. So in short and form, you write this as delta, or a change in distance, over delta change in time. So this triangle thing is called delta, OK? And it typically, in mathematics, it reflects change of something. So this is the average rate. And so this becomes 2 over 1. So this is going to be 2. And since it's a rate, and let's say the distance is in feet, and time is in seconds, the units of this guy will be in feet per second. OK? So that's called the average rate of change. For instantaneous, and this is where really calculus comes into play, instantaneous is saying at one particular instant in time, let's say at, for example, 1.500029 seconds, what is the rate of change of this thing that's moving, whatever it is, okay? It could be a rocket, could be a ship, could be you walking from your house or something like that. Although if you're walking from your house, I don't think you'll be interested in 1.500029 seconds, okay? But this is where calculus comes in, and if you want to find out what the instantaneous rate of change is, then it is really, remember the rate of change in this context is the velocity or the speed, okay? For instantaneous, it turns out to be the slope of the line to the graph at this particular instance in time. So this should be really a tangent, okay? I'm having a hard time drawing a tangent here. So remember, a tangent is a line that touches the graph only at one place. The slope of this line, the slope of that line, is equal to the instantaneous rate of change. instantaneous rate of change. All right, so that's it for uh, P.2, okay?